Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for October 24th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Today is Chalalalongkorn Day, Deep Valley Disarmament Week, Diwali, Kali Puja, and Lakshima Puja. So lots of celebrations for our Hindu siblings. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Our reading today uh, is Genesis chapter 33, starting with verse 1. Um, so Jacob has been on his way to reunite with Esau. Jacob or Esau had 400 men with him, so it doesn't seem like this is going to be a good thing. But Esau goes forward, has sent a parade of sort of gifts for Esau, has wrestled with God apparently, and is now finally going to to meet up with Esau. Um, Just a reminder that Jacob had left the land because Esau wanted to kill him. So Jacob has a lot to kind of worry about, and yet he goes forward. Listen for God's word to speak to you. Now Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming, and 400 men were with him. So he divided the children among Leah and Rachel and the two maids. He put the maids with their children in front, and Leah with her children, and Rachel and Joseph last of all. He himself went on ahead of them, bowing himself to the ground seven times until he came near his brother. But Esau ran to meet him, and embraced him, and fell on his neck and kissed him, and they wept. When Esau looked up and saw the women and children, he said, Who are these with you? Jacob said, The children whom God has graciously given your servant. And the maids drew near, they and their children, and bowed down. Leah, likewise, and her children drew near and bowed down. And finally, Joseph and Rachel drew near, and they bowed down. Esau said, What do you mean by all this company that I met? Jacob answered, To find favor with my Lord. But Esau said, I have enough, my brother. Keep what you have for yourself. Jacob said, No, please, I find favor. If I find favor with you, then accept my present from my hand, for truly to see your face is like seeing the face of God, since you have received me with such favor. Please accept my gift that is brought to you, because God has dealt graciously with me, and because I have everything I want. So he urged him, and he took it. Then Esau said, Let us journey on our way, and I will go alongside you. But Jacob said to him, My Lord knows the children are frail, and the flocks and the herds which are nursing are a care to me. And if you are over, if they are overdriven for one day, all the flocks will die. Let my Lord pass on ahead of his servant, and I will lead on slowly, according to the pace of the cattle that are before me, and according to the pace of the children until I come to my Lord in Seir. So Esau said, Let me leave with you some of the people who are with me. But he said, Why should my Lord be so kind to me? So Esau returned that day on his way to Seir. But Jacob journeyed to Succoth and built himself a house and made booze for his cattle before the place is, therefore the place is called Succoth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, uh, Jacob and Esau finally meet once again. And all of the fears that Jacob had about what this meeting might mean all the things that Esau might hold against him, he doesn't. This is an amazingly tender reunion. Esau receives him with open arms. 
um, and 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 says, you know, what is what is with all this stuff that you have have sent ahead of me? And he says, these are gifts for you to to butter you up. That's not necessary. You don't need to give me gifts. God has been gracious to me. You don't need to give me anything. Who are all these people? Well, these are the people that that God has given me. These are my wives and my children. And Esau rejoices with Jacob. He rejoices that he's received his brother back. This is not the response that we were expecting at all. Imagine what happened on Esau's journey. Imagine the story that Esau would tell of this. Whatever it is, we got a glimpse of it when he received a blessing from Isaac. Isaac said that you will serve your younger brother, but in the end, you will take his yoke off of your neck. And it seems that that has happened. Esau has let go of the resentment. Esau has let go of the anger. Esau has let go of wanting to kill his brother and is just pleased to have his brother back. This is reconciliation. This is only accomplishable through God. Jacob, however, is not as quick. Esau says, come on back. We'll come on back to see her. You know, I've got everything set up um, and take all your, your folks with you. It'll be great. And Jacob says, gives an excuse about, you know, the children and the flocks can't go that fast. So you go ahead with your 400 men, go back to see her. I'll meet up with you then. And he goes not to see her, but goes to Succoth. It becomes called, um, which means booths. Um, so the, the, festival of the, the festival of booths Sokol, that uh, the, our Jewish siblings just celebrated, um, that's, that's the same word. So he lives in a different place, right? There's a certain amount where he doesn't necessarily trust this reconciliation. Um, and both of those things are so very human. We come together, we reconcile, and yet sometimes we don't want to let go of those things. We don't want to let go of the resentment. Um, Jacob doesn't want to let go of all of those things. And so he doesn't completely restore with Esau. So we have at the same time this wonderful, beautiful story of reconciliation, and yet there's there's sort of a, a theme that's played in a minor note, that it's not a full reconciliation. how interesting it is that we see this all from Jacob's standpoint. Right? Like I said before, what would it be like to hear Esau's story? So where are those times when you have received reconciliation that you were not expecting? Where have you mistrusted reconciliation? Where have you held on to some of the worries and some of the fears and some of the resentments? How has that affected those relationships? There's just a little bit more of um, chapter 33. So I'm just going to do that. And instead of tacking it onto the uh, the next story, but um, Jacob came safely to the city of Shechem, which is in the land of Canaan on his way from Padan Aram. And he camped before the city. And from the sons of Amor, Shechem's father, he bought for 100 pieces of money the plot of land on which he had pitched his tent. Therefore he erected an altar and called it El 
Elohi Israel, uh, which means God, the God of Israel. So Jacob now has a plot of land. He actually owns some of the land. So let's go ahead and join our hearts together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We give you our praise and thanks, O God, for all gifts of love we have received from you and for your persistent mercy in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the grace and peace of Jesus Christ. all creatures with whom we share the earth. Those whom we have loved and who have loved us. Support and encouragement from others. food and drink to share in your name. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for the possibility of reconciliation. For the grace that you give us that we can actually extend to others. For the abundance of that grace. For the ability to let go of things, to take someone else's yoke off of our neck. We also thank you for the fears and resentments that we sometimes carry with us. For their trying to keep us safe. For them actually keeping us safe. Help us discern the difference between the two. We give you our cares and concerns, O oh God, because we know you are kind and care for your children in every circumstance. Especially we pray for Lutheran and Reformed churches. People who live in poverty. those who are sick or suffering. Those who work for their healing. Comfort and peace for those who are dying. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Aquilo, Olga's husband, whose cancer may have returned. For Danielle, Sandy's daughter-in-law, who is recovering from surgery. For Jan Ann, Kelly, Ernie, with ongoing health issues. for Beverly's friend and brother. For Tom, Sharon's brother, who continues to just have major health issues. We pray for the friends and family of Vic, a close friend of the O'Charts. We pray for all of those 
people and situations and events that are on our hearts and our minds. To you, O God, we give up the burdens of this day, trusting your love and mercy. To you, O God, we surrender ourselves, trusting our risen Lord to lead us always in the way of peace, today, tomorrow, and forever. Amen. Now let us continue to pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let us cast our anxiety on the Lord who cares for us. The God of all grace will restore, strengthen, and support us. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow for some more. Like this video, share it with someone else, click on the subscription and the notification button, as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, following us on Facebook and Instagram, and you can also subscribe to this through Substack. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of the Presbyterian Church USA, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Thank you for joining me. Have a blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.